San Jose one year change. The project proposes to uh, add or implement electronic tolling in the corridor that would allow a single occupant vehicle the chance to pay a fee to add uh, an additional lane in each direction for a portion of the corridor from roughly Route uh, 87 to 280. The phase uh, type of document was an environmental uh, document was an initial study and environmental assessment. And, uh, uh, it is proposed as a negative declaration of finding no significant impact. We performed 27 different technical reports in various areas, including traffic, noise, cultural, biological, visual, among, another, among another other ones. Um, there was no finding of any significant impact as a result of that draft environmental document um, analysis. The comment period did on, end on February 28th, um, and I want to make clear that this is a technical evaluation of the uh, impacts of the proposed project. It looks at all the environmental impacts, discloses those impacts, and includes what the findings and, and, and potential mitigation uh, might be that project. The policy decisions on whether to implement 85 express lanes or how to implement them or when to implement them or frankly if to implement them with the VTA Board of Directors. All of those decisions are still yet to be made. So what we've concluded, or at least the public comment period of conclusion, is the uh, technical evaluation of the environmental equipment of the project. The policy decisions are still yet to be made by the VTA Board. So uh, VTA either conducted or attended five different public meetings during the public comment period. Um, some we organized some as uh, uh, act chair, uh, or, or mentioned we did attend the city of Sar Saratoga and the city of Virginia council meetings. We heard a lot of comments uh, from the public at those public meetings, and I wanted to categorize those into the four main comment areas. Of course, there were many other comments, but these were what we believe are the four main ones. That uh, first one was that. Uh, regarding previous agreements uh, that the Santa Clara County Traffic Authority had with the city's Lone Corridor. Another one was the type of environmental document that we prepared. Another one was the specific noise impacts within the corridor that we analyzed. And another category was uh, existing traffic congestion within the corridor that this project may or may not be able to assist. So the first one being the uh, the, the previous agreements in 1989, the Santa Clara County Traffic Authority uh, entered into a series of agreements with uh, cities in the corridor. Each one of those was slightly different, but the gist of each one of those agreements was it was a performance agreement that were executed prior to the construction of the Route 85 freeway. So it was executed in 1989, the freeway was constructed in the early mid 90s. The, uh, the gist of the comments that, that we received mostly with regard to the use of the median that, that called for a six-lane freeway and a res reservation of the median area for mass transportation. Most of the comments that were reserved that we received based on um, the portion of the comment about mass transportation was the, the desire to believe that that meant a fixed rail improvement or a light rail system in that section of 85. Um, we, uh, we did look back at many of the historical documents that, that followed that uh, those agreements back in 1985. Our research found that there was uh, six updates to the Valley Transportation Plan or Countywide Transportation Plan, ten updates to the Regional Transportation Plan, and five different countywide sales tax measures that occurred since that execution and the building of that freeway. None of those documents uh, included any uh, project that was a uh, fixed rail uh, mass transportation in, in that portion of 85. We also looked back to see if we had actually received any requests to include um, a, a fixed rail transportation project in 85, and we don't have any record that any city in the corridor actually requested that one be included in any of the plans that have been subsequently been updated. So we hadn't received any of uh, request for that, so there was no work done to actually do that in any of those plans. Having said all that, this project does not preclude that option should there be a desire to actually do something like that in the future. 
In order for it, uh, a project like that to be considered, however, there are some steps that must be put into place to consider a large project like that. It, the project would have to be included in both the countywide plan adopted by this board and the regional transportation plan adopted by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission. So the steps that would need to be done to actually include that project would be, number one, we would have to have either city or city or BTA could perform a conceptual engineering project or a study that would define the project, establish the scope, and um, establish what the estimated cost would be for that project. And it is a 20 mile long corridor, so it would be substantial. The second step to include that in a regional transportation plan is to actually identify funding for that project. It has to be uh, in a fiscally constrained plan, and therefore we have to identify funding that a new, a new uh, uh, sales tax or other funding. Third thing is that the, the city's agent corridor to support that major transit investment would also have to up, update their general plan land use zoning to, to increase that uh, uh, land use densities around any future station. So there's those are the steps we have to go into place to accomplish that. Um, second topic was the type of environmental document um, the, as lead agency Caltrans and BTA worked on this together. Uh, there was the initial studies that went into place to determine what the level of impact was. There was no significant impact and therefore it was a decision to use the initial study and environmental assessment document. Uh, uh, EIR is typically used when a uh, lead agency may have to make a finding of uh, overriding consideration on significant impact and do not have any of those in this situation. Uh, an alternative for light rail or other fixed rail like corridor could not be considered because it's not in the regional transportation plan. Third area that uh, was of, of issue was the specific noise impacts. Uh, in the uh, one of the technical studies, we did uh, survey 141 locations throughout the corridor, and the noise analysis found that the decibel increases range from either one to three decibels throughout the corridor. A one decibel increase is actually only discernible in a laboratory environment, and a three decibel increase is considered barely noticeable. So what we concluded on the noise was that there was not a significant increase due to this project. Fourth area of concern was the congestion that already existed in the corridor, particularly around the 280 and 85 interchange. And I'm going to go back to this small map that talks about some of the things that we would like to consider. There are a number of small projects that we could be looking at and consider in terms of including them in this project at uh, I-280 and Little Expressway. There already is ramp gearing being uh, constructed in the 85 corridor, and we're out to partner with the city to continue on a 280 corridor study. Um, next steps, I'm going to get back to that. So as uh, the agency Caltrans will respond to each one of the public comments received and respond to them in a formal written way. Um, that will be released. It will take us a couple of months to do that with Caltrans, but it will be a formal uh, written response to each one of the comments. We certainly intend to continue to work with the cities, especially Saratoga, to identify any potential noise reduction opportunities that may exist. Uh, we're going to examine opportunities, as I just mentioned in that map, to see if there's anything else that we can do uh, to some of the congestion at the 280 interchange it is uh, pretty significant improvements, but we can still continue to look at that. And then finally, part of the implementation of the policy plan is to bring back to the Board of Directors an expressway program implementation plan, which would be a policy decision. Again, as I mentioned, the how what plan or the type of project um, decision. And that can be done. Well, there, there actually has been no plan that included light right. rail in 85. So right, that's not clear, right. and I just wanted to be So we have not done any work on that. Okay, so those comments were simply to address a topic yeah. that had been raised, but it right. If, if okay. there's a desire to go forward, there is a process to try to include a project like that in a regional. Okay, and, then, and so the comment, I just wanted to make a short comment. It would be probably good if those in the community who are interested in that were apprised that there is a project not on that quarter but on the north south quarter that center plans for 
either BRT or light rail in the north south quarter between Sunnyvale and Cupertino. And so I would just mention that those interested in fast, frequent transit from north to south, I hope they'll take a look at that, that plan, which is now a BRT plan, I suppose, and, and look at that on, the, on that. It's a slightly different axis, but I think it accomplishes maybe what they're looking to accomplish. Right. Uh, Director Wooden's referred to the BRT strategic plan that looked at five different corridors, and uh, we certainly want to, in the interim at least, to implement express buses in this quarter, which would be a, a very beneficial because the free flowing lanes that uh, with the express lane process would it really have uh, uh, express buses be a winner in that quarter. Right. And, and actually, let me just mention that for those interested in the community, presumably the, the staff can alert them that the, the is pursuing a north-south study right now in this budget year to look at transit options on the north-south axis. Thank you. Thank you. We have a number of speakers. The benefits of express lane program, the last bullet. You said that express lanes on 237 have also improved travel times in the general purpose lane by up to seven minutes. How do you prove this one? Because our observation is that because they cannot cross the bubble white line that you plug traffic and we increase and uh, travelers along the general purpose lane are having more delays in favor of the one of the express lane. Uh, Director Estes is referring to the already existing express lane in the 237 corridor where we have been in operation now for almost two years and it's uh, provided travel time benefits for both express lane users and the general purpose lanes. And we have been tracking the uh, uh, improvement in, in travel time in all of those lanes. We actually have both a technological way of doing that because we have monitoring bucks in all the lanes as well as visually and travel time uh, runs and travel time counts. And we have been evaluating improvements in all the lanes. And so uh, although the uh, what you're referring to is there is some restricted access in those areas. It's still improving to all the travel lanes. Okay, that one I disagree because uh, feedback from the user of the general purpose lanes are all complaining that they have extended their travel time. So I don't know your technological way of survey, but I'm getting it direct from drivers passing the lane. So I just want to register that uh, question because. Uh, it's very almost impossible that we, you reduce the number of lanes and those two remaining lanes that we use still improve their travel time. So it, 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 even in common sense, you know, it will not work. So that's my, that's my problem. Yeah. Regarding, regarding the utilization of vegans in any of the projects say, that they engage in? I'm not aware of any. And just to, to reaffirm that any efforts or any modifications here for the, the concepts you're bringing forward would not preclude any other potential future mass transportation options, right? Yeah, uh, the, the corridor, the portion of the, the new 85 is actually quite wide, so there is, uh, we're going to still maintain a uh, pretty wide median even with a second lane, and uh, there uh, likely would be room for that. But we, again, we have not done any studies on that to actually look at study that I talked about happened to be done first, but uh, portions of the corridor in Mountain View and Sunnyvale do not have an inside median, so it would be an aerial system if that was so desired in another part of the corridor as well. Uh, thank you, and uh, I can't remember uh, an sure. issue uh, which is related to funding, and I cannot remember if regional transportation plans historically have identified potential funding options or not, if you could just clarify that for me. Yeah, the way the regional transportation plan works, and we do it the same way at our county level, is we, uh, there's a, a forecast or an estimate of what the future funding for it is a 25 year plan. So we, we estimate that with NTC and we estimate what the expected identified funding is that we can plan for in that 25 year period, and then we match that up with projects or costs to make sure that they balance. So it's existing funding sources and potential future, like, uh, sales tax extension. So that estimate of funding is over a 25-year period, but it must match the cost of the projects that we would put in the plan. And of course, the potential future funding options are always in a state of um, 
don't be say they're volatile and you can't be prophetic about what's out there in 20 years for this part. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We have a, another